What's up, guys? We are glad you are back, man. And we are continuing our study on Hosea, and we're on chapter 12. We're going to start with the 11, uh, 12 first, though. So really, we're on 11. Yeah, 11. And, End of 11. Uh, uh, 11 and 9, uh, eight, uh, 9 tenths. I'm scared. <laughs> Actually, I guess it'd be 11 and 12 twelfths, or 11 twelfths. We still got one more verse that we're going to go I'm terrible through. at math. Just start reading, and I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, that guy speaking, that is Steven, so uh figured I'd introduce him. I know you guys know, but if it's your first time, we are glad you're here, and it's Paul and, and Stephen. That's right, man. So let's go on and get started. Let's jump into Hosea chapter uh, 12. I'm reading from the NASBA, 1995, New American Standard Bible. And uh, I think you have there the ESV there, sir. I don't think so. Oh, it's not? No, sir. Oh, that's right. Rocking, rocking yeah, some yeah, CS, yeah, CS, CSB baby. right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah We'll see how it holds up. We'll see how it holds up. <laughs> <laughs> it says, Ephraim surrounds me with lies and the house of Israel with deceit. Judah is also unruly against God, even against the Holy One who is faithful. Ephraim feeds on wind and pursues the east wind continually. He multiplies lies and violence. Moreover, he makes a covenant with Assyria, and oil is carried to Egypt. The Lord also has a dispute with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. He will repay him according to his deeds. So we got here a uh, Ephraim and Judah who are evil uh, in their living, man. I think the, the thing is... It sounds kind of like they're trying to surround God as like an enemy, mm. uh, kind of like an army that that they're trying to go overtake God, you know, um, from their uh, evil uh, against them. It says that they are unruly against God. He says, even the one who is faithful to him, the holy one who is faithful. That's tough, man, because uh, in our own lives, man, I see that God has done so good to us, man. It's just that we'd open our eyes, but we always often strike against him, man. I had a, a brother uh, uh, come and tell me the other day, asked the question, which is a true question. He's like, like, how can I have more faith? You know? And despite the things that God has done in our lives in the past, over and over and over, you know, it's like it's just a difficult time, it seems like, to have the trust that we have in him, man. Mm. And I think that... Uh, just like um, Ephraim, and or just like Israel, Ephraim and uh, Jacob or Judah, they turn to their own devices to be able to accomplish the things in their life rather than trusting the one who has done so much for them in the past. Yeah, it's interesting about the lies and deceit. Satan is the deceiver mm-hmm. and uh, the things that you desire in your flesh or that the world offers us that they're, they're lies, they're deceptive. They don't give the life that they are promising. Yep. These guys are talking about how... The, the crazy thing of the world is that uh, at some point, good will become evil in the sight of the world and evil will, will be good, considered yeah. like right living. And you see that already in our yeah, culture in North America where it's like, oh my gosh, like we're just trying to have a good family, like, like a, a mom and a dad and kids that love people well. And like all that's just like being kind of attacked right now yeah, yeah. and and we're trying to rip apart things we were just talking about like marxism and socialism and all these things <laughs> where it's like man you know uh That's just really trying to disband man. the family like yeah. the smallest the smallest most important foundational piece of society yeah. is being attacked and how it's like oh you want to be a, a mom and a dad that love your kids and train your kids and help them think well and all that uh, nope gonna yeah, like you separate you that, out man. and, and yeah. you can't uh, you can't live according to the word of God and it's just it's all under attack right now yeah, uh, which it's not I mean it's not the first time ever in the world so yeah. it's just weird that uh, <clears throat> in statements that companies have made they said that they want to uh, destroy the nuclear family. Like, yeah. What? That's like who the most says important that? Component, <laughs> man. That's one of the most uh, important components. Who says that? Uh, what? That's, uh, Black Lives Matter. Has oh yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So, like er, very, very early on. Yeah. Very early on in that. It's that is what is the primary thing. It's like it's not about race. It's about like ripping apart these foundational pieces yeah. of society, and it's meant to upturn a lot. Yeah. And you were talking about a. Uh, 
you were talking about how it sounds like people are surrounding God in mm-hmm. this, where it's like, oh man, it sounds like effort. Like all, all these wicked people are like trying to get around him and all this. <laughs> Dude, I love Psalm 2 where it says, the nations rage, the people's plot in vain, the kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers conspire together against the Lord and his anointed one. And it goes on and it says, the Lord laughs at them. Like yeah. the, the uh, Lord is enthroned, the Lord is righteous, the uh, Lord is good. You can you can surround him all you want, but beware. Yeah. Um, you going down, brother? Yeah, <laughs> like there is there is only one king here, that's and, right. and that's him. It reminds me of Lord of the Rings, where it's like a hey, Soromon was trying to uh, <laughs> okay, do yeah, their yeah. do their names. <laughs> you already buzzed out Soromon, and then you get Sauron, and then you get Aragon, and like they. I lose it, man. I was, I, yeah, I was thinking, man. Well, I don't know I if you're talking about thing, the the white wizard. Are you talking about the gray wizard? Are you talking about well, the king? There's are actually you... two white wizards. So, you know, oh uh, man, because Gandalf became a, a white wizard there. But yeah, Sauron was the original white. Confusing wizard, yeah. me even more. What's your quote? <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, <laughs> he was like, "You want the ring? You think he's like, hey, the Lord of Rings gives power to no one." You know, and so in a way, that's a bad sense for Lord mm, of the Rings. But right. in God, it's the same way. It's like, dude, God has all the power, and mm. He's not going to reserve power for you. So if you think that you're going to like be able to to usurp His throne by surrounding Him and attacking Him, nah, bro, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, all like, authority he, has been given. That's right. He has he has the yeah. keys, baby. Mm-hmm. He the king. Man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was two verses. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it says, The Lord also has a dispute with Jacob, or Judah, and will punish Jacob according to his ways. He will repay him according to his deeds. And it goes into, it says, In the womb he took his brother by the heel, and in his maturity he contended with God. Yes, he wrestled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought his favor. He found him at Bethel, and there he spoke with us. Even the Lord of hosts, the Lord is his name. So it's beautiful because what God is doing, when I'm reading this, I think he's like, dude, you're surrounding me. You're trying to take over. You got violence. You're corrupt. You're leaving me, the one who you should trust. And then he gives an example of why you should trust him. Hmm. You know, uh, I was talking about my buddy that was having struggles with faith. And I think that in those matters, especially throughout scripture, it's like all God does is reveal who he is so that you can recognize he is trustworthy. And so he's like, uh, man, you don't remember Jacob, the, the guy you're named after, you know what right. I mean? Israel, he's like, the reason that you're a people, it's like, what What happened to him? How did he start out? Well, he was, he was a bad dude. He was a sinner. His name, Jacob, literally means to grab after or to overtake. Deceiver, yeah, which is deceive. at the at the That's beginning right. yeah. of this section that we just read, which is why we started where we started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what he did, man. And then. Uh, uh, at one point, God, he, he came face to face with a, a, a representative of God, an angel, and spoke, that angel spoke through the words of God saying that, uh, that you should, you should, I'm going to change your name. I'm mm-hmm. going to make you a different person. I'm going to make you a believer, a follower of me, Yahweh. And it's centered on his mercy. That's right. Yeah. That's the word centered here. Centered on says, his mercy. Favor is actually uh, Hanan. Hmm. Which means grace, yeah, or mercy, or grace, or favor. God's favorable action on your behalf that is unmerited, and that's. I mean, I've been thinking a lot about Jacob because we were teaching about this in our small group this past week, and how this is such a weird, like the wrestling account is a weird thing, but it's yeah. this whole idea that Jacob has been trying to manipulate people mm-hmm. and inflict his will upon everybody else. And it just goes badly, badly, badly for even Jacob himself. It does. And then this is really a turning point where you actually see something change within Jacob. And it's not from himself. That's right. It's yeah. something that has been given to him by God. And that's yeah. what our story is as believers. If you yeah, are a child right. of Abraham or uh, a child of the king, honestly, a, yes, a child right. of God, it is all his grace and his favor upon your life. It is not something that you can manipulate yeah. or maneuver or deceive or like swindle God. God is yeah. gracious to he us. Is, man. Yeah, he gives so much. And still, we like you say, like we, we try and do all these things to manipulate and to like magic, you know. It's like if we rub on the uh, right, say the right words, do the right yeah. things. It's like, no, your righteousness is nasty, yeah, it is, it's, it's gross, yeah. But if you just <laughs> trust in Jesus, man, he turns uh, rags to riches, baby, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so that's what he sees, like, dude, remember where you came from. It's like, I have chosen you out of all the peoples in the world, 
I have chosen you. And he's like, and what have I done but protect you this entire time? Yeah. He's like, dude, remember that. And so for me, it always is when you're in sad situations, tough situations, hard situations, it's remember who you are, man. Mm-hmm. Remember whose you are. And how does he do that? He says it in verse 6. Did we get to verse 6? No, that's where we're at right now. So this is what, yeah, this is the outflow of that. Yeah, that's right. It says, therefore, return to your God. Observe kindness and justice and wait for your God continually. So the word Israel actually means like to contend with, strive. Mm. And so um, Hosea is saying, man, do as Jacob has done, man. Don't let go of God. Like, grasp hold of him because his promises are true. And I think that's the the, um, the um, exhortation that Hosea has given to these people is like, if you return to God and just grasp a hold of him, even in this distress that's going to happen, because there's going to be punishment for sin, man, you know. But if you just hold on to God, there will be good that comes out of it. Hmm. There will be a, a hope that can be seen in the midst of trials. Yeah, I was listening to uh, Knowing Faith, which, well, love that. Uh, It's a great podcast. (laughs) But they were saying, I think Jim Wilkin was saying how um, all throughout Jacob's life, he's like striving with all these people, but it ultimately comes down to like he's really striving against God, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it be through his father-in-law or his wives, all these different pieces along the way. It's like it's not the fight is not with your brother. The fight is not with your job or your employer or all these different pieces. It's like you are you are just grinding against God's will and his purposes for your life. So give over to him like you're saying, hold tightly to him, like draw near to him and and discover discover his character. Yeah, definitely. It says uh, uh, a merchant in whose hands are false balances. He loves to oppress. And Ephraim said, surely I have become rich. I have found wealth for myself. And all my labors they will find in me. No iniquity, which would be sin. Um, It's funny that they use this because in in English, we can't really see it. But uh, it's really like a derogatory term, a merchant, that they use. It's the word uh, Canaan. Like the land that God had uh, uh, given them. Hmm. It says, I have blessed you and made you just like Jacob's name was tamed to Israel, their identity has been transformed. But for them, it's the opposite. It's like, I've made you Israel, but instead you have become like the land in which I cleared for you so that you could be there. It's like you went from the ones who God has chosen and called to worship the real, true, and living God hmm. to a people who just falsely run after idols so much so that they uh, were worthy of destruction. They were set aside for destruction, man. Yeah, man, this this makes me think about how externally everything can line up. Like you can have crossed all your T's, dotted all your I's. You may look ethical, but God sees the heart. And, and how he says, you know, uh, Ephraim thinks, <laughs> he thinks that, you know, I, I've done my part. Like I've, you know, you can't find any fault in me. But it's like, no, the Lord sees beneath this, the surface of yeah. what you're what facade you have. And just thinking about like for our world, like everybody's trying to run the PR game. Like you're trying to look really yeah. good and do the right things. So the people, but when you call out, I mean, I remember a couple of years ago, like Ricky Gervais does, did like some, yeah. <laughs> dude, 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 just kind of called things yeah. how they were. Celebrity culture and people out, like sweat at that. Yeah. It's like, oh, you look all yeah. shiny and good, but everybody mm. knows the reality. Yeah. And that man, that's hard so, stuff. Yeah, that's it hard to watch actually. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it was like the cringe and the like uh uneasiness about that. Uneasy, about yeah, that. uneasiness. But I think this also is is just a testimony of, of Ephraim's pride. He's like, dude, I got the money. I've done all this myself. Oh uh, yeah. And he's like, and I have done it without sin. Even though they already know it's because they have unjust scales. Yeah. And they oppress their own people. Mm. But they're saying that you can't find any fault in me, man. I think that uh, other uh, 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 writers in, in that, that read the Hebrew Scripture actually, because there's a, a textual variant in this okay. where they look, and, and some of it says actually that it's not that. It says that even in their wealth that their sins cannot be hidden. So it's kind of the same way in which they say they think they can hide their sins. They can't buy, buy their way out yeah, of it. they can't buy their way out of the mm. sin and the punishment that's going to happen. Mm. It says, uh, continue, it says, 
But I have been the Lord your God since the land of Egypt, and I will make you live in tents again, as in the days of the appointed feast. This is a, a, a unique perspective because it can be taken two ways. One, it can be taken as the punishment of, of, of your sin, your iniquity, your turning from me is to be stripped. You know, like uh, it would be like uh, when you don't pay your fees, you get your house foreclosed. Okay. And you get put on the street. And so it could be saying, God is saying, like, I'm taking away what I have given you. Yeah. But at the same time, also earlier, I think in, in chapter two, he talks about that we'll go back to, to Egypt, mm. uh, to the wilderness. And there I'll show you my love, my compassion again, Interesting. Yeah. where they had to only rely on God. And so in one sense, it could also be like, not on, not that I am sending you out to the wilderness to punch you, punish you to live in tents again, but I'm sending you out there so that we can reclaim that love that we had together. Yeah, I mean, I think that's about the intimacy that's meant to, like even he brings out the festival days, like yeah. those are meant to be moments of drawing near to the Lord, to sure. remember his kindness, to, yeah. to think about the things that are going to last forever, not just these like... You know, look yeah. at my awesome house. Look at my money. <laughs> look like at my, my money. I've just grown. My stockpile. <laughs> and Jesus is like, that's great that you build bigger barns. Your life is demanded from you tonight. Yeah, like that that whole piece mm. where it's like, man, that I would see things that matter and actually like hold those high, you yeah, know, in my life. for eternity. Yeah. And I think so actually, it's kind of a kindness. Yeah. It is a kindness. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's what God says, that he gives kindness uh, to pull us to repentance. Right? Yeah. And so I think that is actually, I think it's a both and in a way yeah. is that he is doing that as punishment. But in that punishment, it's that kindness of the punishment that draws us back near to him. It's like with my kids when they like punch their sister or something like Hudson. I'm like, <laughs> man, you go sit next to her and do something kind to her and be near her because like sin is a separation, right? It's a yeah. brokenness of, a, it's a violation mm-hmm. of the relationship. And so it's like the best thing you can do is to put them together and mm-hmm. to to show them what a right relationship is meant to be. It's like you take away the thing that was causing them to fight. It's yeah. like y'all love each other, like yeah. hold each other's hands. <laughs> <laughs> that's your punishment. Yeah, that's your, <laughs> <laughs> it's your punishment to be good to each other. <laughs> That is a good example, though. Like, yeah, be good to each other. Like, yeah. that's, that's your punishment because it does restore yeah. that relationship. And that's what God desires from the people that he's chosen from the very beginning is that re- restoration of relationship, man. Yeah. Because this whole thing, this whole book that we've been reading about is that marriage covenant, man. That covenant that God has made with Israel and is faithful to it no matter what. Hmm. And in order for that relationship to be restored, there are things that he has to do. But he always does it out of love and commitment, man. That hesed love, that covenantal love, that, that what they call it, tender mercies, man. Hmm. That's what God has, tender mercies, man. Um, tender, the app, has ruined, uh, which I realize the spelling is different. However, <laughs> just ruined. I've, ruined. Never, I've never put that together. <laughs> Sorry, so, I've ruined yeah, it for you, ruined you now. For don't don't now, use man. that anymore. <laughs> Uh, but I don't think Tinder shows no mercy, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not at no. all. Uh, Can uh, you edit that out? <laughs> my distraction, <laughs> my, my ADD. Uh, it says, uh, I have also spoken to the prophets, and I have gave numerous visions, and through the prophets I have I gave parables. I think when, uh, oh, I didn't even know. Uh, we, got yeah, we got Ralph. We got Ralph, our podcast yeah. dog. Yeah, he's, in he's, it, a, he's our little mascot. I heard a little like, I know, he's like licking himself out. Oh, no, no, no. He snuck in here. Yes, he did. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, I think it's a, a, a showing that every time a prophet or, uh, and we're going to continue to see this a little bit later, but it's that God speaks through these people. These are God's very words trying to call um, his people back to him. He said he's giving them things. He said he's giving them words. He's giving them visions, man. He's giving them a direction so that we can seek and follow. He's giving them parables mm. or or smooth speech in a way that it could be heard, that it could draw the heart near, you know? Mm. He's done all these things, yet we have turned away. Uh, It says, Is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are worthless. In Gilgal they sacrifice bulls. Yes, their altars are like the stone heaps beside the furrows of the field. All of these things he has done to them, it is sin that they turn to, worthlessness. They turn to idols. Things that are not living. Mm. I did a little study. I've been reading uh, Joshua, 
And in Joshua chapter 3, they use uh, the living God is what the English translation does it. But they said that uh, really in the Hebrew, there's no article. An article is like, uh, or a definite article, which is the, mm-hmm. it's, it, there's, it's not there. And so the connotation that we give is like it's a title, the living God. Mm-hmm. But really in the Hebrew, it's a description. It's saying, God that's alive. Yes, that God is alive, <laughs> and these other gods that you serve are not. Yeah, you know, and I think that's a, that's a pretty profound distinction. Even though we do give it a title because He is the Living God, but they're saying the writer is saying that God is living, while all these other things that we try and give and devote our lives to, like these guys here, they're uh, offering up uh, sacrifices to bulls to these bales that have no life. Yeah, they are worthless and empty. But anyway, that was a little side effect or side little excursion I did, a little excursus. I'm glad glad you read your Bible. Yeah, thank that's you, good, man. man. Yeah, and it was actually <laughs> the Hebrew Bible. Whoa, so, yeah. So I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm practicing. Look at you. I'm practicing, man. I'm not there yet, but <laughs> are we all? No, we're, we're, we're not always not there. one uh, step, growing. one yeah. step at a time, man. That's right. That's right. It says, "Now Jacob fled to the land of Aram, and and Israel worked for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep." It says, but by my, but by a prophet the Lord brought Israel from Egypt, and by a prophet he was kept. Ephraim has provoked a bitter anger, so his Lord will leave the blood guilt on him and bring back his reproach to him. So we jump back to the story of uh, Jacob again, Jacob slash Israel, and we get both sides, Jacob and Israel. And the 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 word here is uh uh, uh oh man I forgot what the word oh shamar. So the word here is shamar is what uh, um, I think the main focus is, is uh, he kept sheep, shamar, or he was a shepherd, mm-hmm. that's what that word means. And it was saying that that we have been kept by God through the prophet Moses. The next part says that uh, uh, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he was kept. Just like Jacob, referring back to who we talked to earlier, kept these sheep. It's like God is keeping you. Mm. He is keeping you. He was trying to allow you to be in the best position. And I now feel like I'm, I'm about to talk like uh, Joel Osteen or something. Like, he's trying to make you be the best you you could ever be. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, is he is, man. Now he ain't going to give you like wealth and health. He may give you some uh, difficult situations. Which he, al- he already says that. Like he says, I'm going to draw you out. He yeah. says, I'm not going to let you live up in your, your big house. Yeah. You know. Not to say that money is bad or, mm-hmm. you know, that possessions are wrong, but man, God cares enough about our hearts that He would He would yeah. be tender to us, that He would tend our hearts and yeah. and cultivate things within us. Mm-hmm. Um, and He does so by prophet. He does so by His proclamation of His word, yeah, that's and truth. that's truth. Yeah, that yeah. is truth for the hearer, yeah. and that we would have hearts that hear. And uh, it's life for the yeah. hearer. And sometimes we think we're living life, but all we're living is death, man. Because mm. the things that we think are building up are just destroying everything around us. And that's kind of like what we were talking about when we ver- first started. These lies of the world are deceiving us into thinking that the things that we're doing is good. Yeah. When really they're destruction to the family, to the home, to the nation. To, to the, the soul, yeah. the individual, man. Like yeah. it just shreds you. Like you look at David's confession where he's like, he goes after this lie. He goes after this deceptive urge and desire that he has, and it's just like, oh, ah, yeah. just shreds him. It, does. it says like, uh, it says his bo- his bones were his bones, vexed. Yeah, man, I just think about that and to the core, yeah. like just worn. You yeah. feel it, man, and uh, you know, I I just think about that, and then if we think about our sin and the sin that we commit sometimes, and how we broke and we feel like it just like zaps our soul, sucks our soul. We feel faint and weary from the sin that we've done and the weight that it's put on us. And then I think about Jesus on the cross Mm. and I think about just how heavy that was for me to barely even bear. Yet we've all had those feelings and Christ has put all of those feelings upon himself. Yeah. So that means like that feeling that I thought was killing me, that was draining my soul, zapping it, that feeling that David had, when he said that his bones are vexed, like he can he can barely live with the weight of the sin he did. Yeah. Christ has absorbed all of that. Yeah. Man, I mean, no wonder why he was sweating blood drops and and was saying, "Man, I, my soul is is troubled." He's, I yeah. says, "I'm my soul is distressed, God." You know. Yeah. Because 
that is a weight that I cannot even imagine to bear, yet he bore it for us. Right. And he's willing to do everything to get it back, as as in causing us to, to be in some difficult situations, man. Having to be removed from a place that he's given us in order to show us the love that he truly has for us, man. And that is the power and the devotion that God has for those who are in his hesed love, his covenant, his his a relationship with him. That mm. is the power uh, and the devotion that he has to his his bride, to mm. us, the church, the people of God. This whole book has been talking about that, man. And uh, it's just he gave his son because he cared so much about the, the, the people that he called. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Mm. And then we end on a kind of a bad note here. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, Ephraim has provoked to bitter anger, so his Lord will leave his blood guilt on him and bring back his reproach to him. It's like, man, they're turning away. He's going to, uh, uh, like Romans says, he's just going to give them over to their own mm-hmm. uh, their own lusts. And that's the thing, man. Again, it just goes back to what you said. It's like when we take these lies and don't turn to, to God in his truth is, we're given over these things where mm. we think these things that are evil are good and then we recognize them as good and then it seems like we never know the wiser. Mm. And that's a, that's, a, that's a horrible place to be, man. It's a horrible place to be. But God did send his word, his prophets. He sent his word to us through scripture. He's sending his word by spirit to convict the hearts of people around. And so today, if you feel that God is calling you, because he is, mm-hmm. turn to him, man. Turn to him. Walk now. in the light as he is in the light. That's right. And Even be children of the yeah. light. Uh, sense that darkness and you sense that joylessness and that just drain of life. Thankfully, we have the God who is alive. That's right. Um, that he would shine light into our lives and that he would restore us. He would redeem us. That he would not call us Jacob, but that he would call yeah, us Israel. That he would right. bring us out and that we would be his and that we'd be known by his name. I think that is just hope. Yeah, it is hope. Well, we appreciate you guys for listening today, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Yep.